This is the S-Cross facelift, the top-end alpha variant to be precise. Now the older S-Cross wasn't much of a seller, but ever since the facelift came into the picture, this model's fortunes have risen, and so have the sales, which obviously means a lot more of us are looking to buy this car, isn't it? So we decided to take the S-Cross Alpha variant into our long-term test fleet to see whether the magic lasts in the long run. Before we proceed, do click on the subscribe button and the bell icon to stay up to date with all our latest videos. So far, so good. But that aside, what else do we like about the S-Cross? Now this test car joined our fleet about two and a half months ago and so far we've driven it for 3,000 kilometers. Prior to joining our fleet, it had already done about 6,000 kilometers. It's back from its third free service recently and uh, the only expenses we incurred on it were on the engine oil and the filter. The S-Cross has consistently given us a mileage of 16 km per litre in the city and close to 20 km per litre on the highway, sometimes even more. The smart hybrid system also features idle start-stop tech, which basically shuts off the car's engine every time the car comes to a halt to save on fuel in stop-and-go traffic situations. But that can be a bit annoying to some people. Thankfully, there's an easy fix to that. Just press this button and it will disable the function. But aside from its focus on mileage, the S-Cross also has that premium quotient. And they get you attention. That's because of these gorgeous HID projector headlamps with LED DRLs. But these are available only in the Alpha variant and is the primary culprit for its high cost compared to the Zeta variant. But you know what? We think they're worth it. And you'll sense it whenever drivers ahead of you will give you way, thinking there's a buddy gari pulling up behind them every time you flash those headlamps. Heading for an outing with family and friends, well, the S-Cross's rear seat has plenty of space for three passengers to sit comfortably, peacefully, without any elbow wars. And it's not just space that makes the S-Cross suitable for long drives. There are things to be said about its handling and ride quality as well, both of which are impressive. We took the S-Cross on a road trip and it just stays glued to the surface and that inspires so much confidence when you're driving on the highways or when you're taking corners on the ghats, or even during the rains. Rock solid is the word. And well, it may be a crossover, but it's also practical enough. The boot space is sufficient too, and the 60-40 split seats just adds so much more to its practicality. Now I had to transport this computer chair to get it fixed, and the 60-40 split seats allowed me to conveniently load the chair onto the boot and still have space for one extra passenger at the back. And for all those who are wondering how good is the S-Cross's ground clearance, well, let me tell you this. It's 180 mm and I have never scraped the bottom even once, I swear. What I and especially the passengers at the back also like is how the S-Cross glides smoothly over potholes and broken roads. Just be wary of the big ones, those thuds you won't be able to escape. All right, so enough of the goody goody stuff. Now let's talk about the things that we did not like, the issues, the problems that all of you want to hear. Firstly, we're happy to report that there are no mechanical issues. There are no problems with the electrics either, except for this teeny weeny issue with the map lights. They don't, they're erratic and don't work as expected. There's something to be said about the paint quality which looks rich on the surface but doesn't seem all that great. It tends to get these scratches quite easily even with the slightest brush of the rivets of your denim. So you'll have to be really careful while getting in and out of the car, especially in tight parking spots. 
On the highway, the 1.3 litre diesel engine lacks enough punch for quick overtakes. You would require a fair amount of planning for that. The S-Cross then is best suited for cruising about calmly or if you're driving in the city. The gears slot in smoothly, the clutch is light and the steering is nice to hold and it makes the car easy to maneuver in the city. And then there is the SHVS system which works its magic by giving a tiny boost during acceleration and a bigger one when it comes to mileage. So the S-Cross is a car that sits a bit under the radar, but the time we spent with it has only made its appeal stronger. Let us know what you would like to know about the S-Cross or the things you would like us to try with it. We'll get you the update in the next report, by which time we should have done 15,000 kilometers.